Welcome to Franklin Field, where tonight, 3-7 and seven Delaware takes on 4-8 and eight Pennsylvania. Hello again, everybody. I'm John Miller, along with John McAdams. Despite the fact that these two teams come in here with sub-500 records, they're not that bad. They played very good competition through the season, but, John, they just haven't been able to get over the hump and learn how to win. That's exactly correct. Both of these teams are very, very similar. They're very, very young. They played almost exacting schedules, and the scores of those games have almost been exactly the same. Also, Pennsylvania comes into this game this evening averaging 10 goals a game on the plus side, 11 on the negative side, while Delaware has scored an even dozen games, goals a game and have allowed 12 goals a game. And a game that figures to be this close to the difference could be the fact that Pennsylvania will be without its best player. Ryan Taylor hurt his knee over the weekend against Syracuse. He won't play, and that means players like number five, Andy Crofton, will have that much more of a load to bear. That freshman really stepped up, John, in a period of 24 hours against Drexel and Bucknell. About two weeks ago, he scored nine goals, a lacrosse player's dream in those two days. And I'll tell you what he's going to have to do. He's going to need two or three or four of those here this evening to help out the red and blue. At the other end of the field, the Blue Hens have a lot of weapons, and the player that it all revolves around is number 37, Tony DiMarzo. He's a young man that is fourth in the country in assists, and Coach G.W. Mix of the University of Pennsylvania says he's the catalyst that makes the Blue Hens go. He's going to bear watching all evening long. Number 11, John Wonder, is the main man he likes to go to. Wonder leads his team in goals. The opening face-off when we come back. If you're balding or have thinning hair, wouldn't you rather look like this? Introducing Instant Hair Plus, the amazing hair thickener that gets rid of bald spots and thickens your hair in an instant. What I like about Instant Hair Plus is it looks totally natural. Even up close, nobody can tell that I'm using it. Instant Hair Plus is easy to use and is not a paint on or cover up. It clings to your hair and actually builds it up thicker and thicker right before your eyes. Now, can you tell where the bald spot was? I could not believe how full, it actually made your hair look. Instant Hair Plus comes in five natural colors, one just right for you, and it's only $19.95. Try it for 30 days risk-free, and if you don't agree that Instant Hair Plus is the next best thing to growing hair, just return it for a prompt refund. To order, call 1-800-221-5700 or send $19.95 plus shipping and handling to P.O. Box 2424-H, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, or call now 1-800-221-5700. about set to go. Both teams trying to right the ship after shaky seasons. And a gorgeous night here at, Veter uh, at Franklin Field. Blue Hens come in. Very explosive squad. Set to start things off. It'll be Joe Gelbard facing off for Pennsylvania against Delaware's Ryan Dolsky. Our netminders tonight for Pennsylvania, number 13, Steve Vasper, just a freshman. And in goal tonight for Delaware, Jamie Blaylock, number five. The junior has had an inconsistent type of a season, and they want him to come through tonight. He will be an important factor tonight for the Blue Hens. I'll tell you, John, what's going to be even more important, and Coach T.W. Mix said this, is winning these face-offs. We saw that in the Penn-Drexel game about two weeks ago where Drexel did not win a face-off, I think, for about three-quarters of play, won four of the right at the start of the fourth quarter, and came out with a one-goal lead. Pennsylvania is really intent on winning these face-offs this evening, and Coach Mix has some plans. If uh, they can't get it done here, uh, they'll go to another option. All right, there's our officials for this evening, a gentleman in the center. The referee is Michael Corcoran. To his right is the umpire, John Gorman. To his left is the field judge, Tim Collin. They'll be the men in charge here this evening. John said a beautiful night here for any sport, lacrosse, baseball, whatever. This is, this is what it's all about here. This, uh, and a beautiful setting here in Franklin Field. And this should be a real good game. Both of these teams, John, are very, very familiar with each other. A lot of the kids are all from the same geographical areas. They know each other. And obviously the closeness of the schools, Pennsylvania and Delaware, it's been a long tradition. I, I, I look for a real close and a very, very hard-hitting physical game. Delaware in the blue with the gold trim and numerals. Pennsylvania in the home whites with the red numerals and the blue shorts as they battle on the faceoff. And coming away with it is Brian Dolsky of Delaware. Bounces it in, and it's picked up there by Phil Perry of the Quakers, bringing it back down the field. We'll fill you in as we go on the rules of this game if you're unfamiliar with lacrosse. 
CC Lagatour has it behind the net for Pennsylvania. Gets it to Vern Briggs. A lot of the load will fall on Briggs as well, not just Crofton. Briggs, number 42, a sophomore who had a great freshman season and has had a very good year so far this season. But with Taylor out, he'll have to pick up more of the load. Lagatour behind the net. They swing it out high to number 12, Andy Greenberg. He gives it up to Briggs. And you'll notice as they get closer to this goal, they will try to use the AstroTurf to the shooter's advantage to bounce it, and hopefully they'll be able to elude the goalkeeper that way. The AstroTurf will come into big play here as you'll see that ball bounce in and around that keeper all night long. Sophomore Alex Goodman with the ball out high for Pennsylvania. The Quakers very deliberate on this first possession of the ball game. Looking for a hole, but he can't get by Dolsky. Goodman to try Dolsky again. The double team comes. Goodman switches off and fires a shot that Blaylock got a piece of and knocked away. As we told you, just keep your eye on the turf because it's going to be used, and there it was as Pennsylvania trying to take advantage and put it past Blaylock. Both of these teams, John, coming in with a, a losing streak for Saddle with Pennsylvania's lost two in a row, and the Hens have lost their last four. Brad Glowacki with the ball behind the Pennsylvania goal. Hawks by number two, Tony Phillips. I'd also mention the Hens come into this game ranked uh, in number 18 in the country. DeMarzo able to get it to Wonder. Wonder tried to go back to DeMarzo, but the pass went awry when he was checked. Greenberg takes a whack at DeMarzo. DeMarzo picks up the ball, but he is whistled for a violation, and the Quakers will bring it in. I wonder how long the field is. Well, that's easy. It's 110 yards long by 60 feet wide. Just a little bit longer than a football field. Tell you about the substitutions at our next opportunity. Goodman in the middle of the field. The double team comes. Down he goes, and the ball is picked up by Delaware. Glowacki has DeMarzo. DeMarzo from the sharp angle. Can't get the shot off. In front. Shot in the big save. Bassford as he robbed John Wonder. He sure did. Wonder got that shot up high, and Bassford was able to get the stick on it and clear it away. Bassford is very quick side to side in his net, and that was a great opportunity to see it right there. Dolsky looking for a hole, loses the ball. Scooped up by Goodman, he can't control it. The loose ball picked up now by Delaware, and the Blue Hens will set things up. Looking for an opening is Stamos, and he bounces it wide. Four 15-minute quarters here is what we play in men's lacrosse. Lowacki working on Dan Connell. Goes left hand, but Connell's with him all the way. Nice spin move by Glowacki. Goes to DeMarzo, looking in front. Shot score! Give it to number 13, Mike Miner. The midfielder coming up on the offensive gives Delaware the one nothing lead. Yeah, they gave Miner too much room in front. He was virtually unchecked and came in from the right side. Keep an eye here on number 11, uh, number 13, Miner. You saw he was wide open and puts the ball on the far side past goalkeeper Steve Bassford. And it's a 1-0 blue hand lead here at coming at the three minute and four second mark of the first quarter. Give DeMarzo the assist on the season, his 33rd, which is tops on the blue hands. And it was really an easy play for Miner once DeMarzo got on the ball. Miner, the goal scorer, controls the face off. Knocked away by Mike Tobin, the aggressive defender for Pennsylvania. Knocked away again and out of bounds. And Pennsylvania will bring this ball in. Now, if you're curious about substitutions, you hear the horn going in the background. Now, if the ball goes out on the side of the field, they have to come in on the horn. If the ball goes out at the end by the end zones, then the players can come in on the fly. There are penalties in the game. We'll tell you about that as we go along. Dan Connell with the ball for Pennsylvania. Goes behind the net to Lagator. Number 23 with the ball for Pennsylvania is Chip Galley. Flips it back for Duncan. Duncan swings it over to Crofton. Crofton, the guy who was recruited by Delaware. They uh, thought they had a pretty good shot at him, but obviously he elected to come to Pennsylvania, but the Blue Hens know all about Andy Crofton. One of the strong moves you'll see a lot of lacrosse players make is when they get the ball behind the net, they will try to cut the corner very, very sharply and try to get that quick thrust onto the goaltender, but Delaware not giving him the corner, so forces Pennsylvania to the outside. Despite the fact that the Blue Hens are giving up 12 goals a game, 
their head coach, Bob Schillinglaw, has been very pleased with his defensive play. It's been the inconsistent goaltending that's had him worried. In front, a nice stop there by Blaylock. Pennsylvania with a good opportunity, but Duncan couldn't put it home. RCC knocks the ball down for Pennsylvania. Phillips has some trouble with the handle as he was knocked down by Wonder, and Wonder will be whistled for a push. Phillips, you might have noticed there, has the longer stick. The teams have four long sticks on the field. They're anywhere from 52 to 72 inches long, generally on the long side. All the rest of them are the short sticks, and they're anywhere from 40 to 42 inches long, and they're generally for the attack players, and the defensemen will use the long sticks. 4.45 into the first quarter. Delaware with a one to nothing lead as the pass goes awry, intended for Greenberg, but Goodman fired it way over. Now you saw the ball go out on the side, you heard the horn, and there come the substitutions in from the side, so, or from the front of the uh, scorer's table, so hopefully that will have you squared away on how the subs come in and out of this game. A little bit different than women's lacrosse, John, where they only allow a certain amount of substitutions per half. A little bit sloppy along the far sideline, Pennsylvania will have the ball now as Delaware gave it right back to them. Both teams guilty of turnovers here in the early going. You mentioned at the start that both of these teams are frighteningly close as far as goals for and goals against, and which, which leads one to believe that it's going to be a very close game all evening long. And John, I can see this being a one or two goal game at the most. It could get sloppy at times. It has been a little bit here in the early going because it's going to be tight and because the teams are going to be scrapping and clawing for everything they can get. Yeah, both teams are coming off disappointing losses. Pennsylvania was up at Syracuse playing in the Carrier Dome against a very tough Orangeman team on Saturday. They played well in the first period, sort of came a fall apart in the second quarter, uh, but came out in the second half and actually outscored Syracuse 7-5, even though they were on the short end of an 18-9 score. Goodman with the ball out high. Has a step, but then he's backed away by Volpe, who did a good job coming over on the double team for Delaware. Greenberg controls now for the Quakers. Delaware, on the other hand, on Saturday, played Loyola. They were leading 7-6 with 10 minutes to go in the game, and Loyola reeled off the final six goals of the game, and it was 12-7 final for Loyola. It's been the kind of season it's been for both of these teams. Crofton looked to make a move and then passed it back to Lagator, but the pass went awry. Phillips can't control it for Pennsylvania, but Dave RCC does and gets it back ahead to Lagator. Lagator moving down the near sideline, gives it up to Crofton, they go behind the net to Youngling. Youngling trying to spin his way in front, had a step and a stick got up in his face and his shot was not a strong one and it went wide. And a good defensive play by Bob Welshmer, number 19 of Delaware, to stay with the hard-charging Youngling as you take a look at Bob Schillinglaw. Pennsylvania's only had one real scoring opportunity thus far in the game's first seven minutes. Good defensive job by the Blue Hands. Lagator had it knocked away as he made his move towards the middle. Welshmer. Welshmer, whose father played lacrosse at Delaware back in the mid-60s, gives it up to DeMarzo, and that's where Schillinglaw wants the ball for Delaware. Now, Stamos. see why DeMarzo has so many assists. His place is planted behind that goal, John, and that's exactly where he is now to look for the open man or the cutter. That's where you want your playmaker to be because you can see all the offensive options. DeMarzo looking in front here. Phillips knocks him down. The ball bounces up to Ellers for Delaware. He looks behind the net, gets it to Wonder. He's checked hard by Vern Briggs. Pennsylvania comes away with a good defensive play by Vern Briggs to sure knock was. away Wonder. The triple team comes on Phillips. He bounces one out to Goodman. And some open ground for the Quakers. Not for long. Goodman goes down. Back comes uh, Kelschmer. DeMarzo looking for a man in front. The drive and a score. Give it to Welshmer, number 19. I'll tell you, what a great setup in there by DeMarzo. DeMarzo got that ball, held it in his cross just long enough and then got it to Welshper, and Welshper puts it by. Watch 37 here, DeMarzo, who really helps set this play up as he gets it over to number 19, Bob Welshper, for the score. And you saw immediately Welshper turning to say to DeMarzo, hey, great pass. Two goals for Delaware, two assists for DeMarzo. And for Welshper, his first. Pennsylvania's Gelbar controls the faceoff, flips it back for Mike Tobin. 
Tobin looking for a long pass down the field. And the Quakers whistle a timeout with 7.09 to go in the first quarter, and the Blue Hens up 2 to nothing. Pennsylvania's had some control of the ball, but they haven't been able to get much on the net. One scoring opportunity is really all they've had in the first eight minutes of this first quarter. Obviously, it's early, and being down in lacrosse two goals means really nothing because the game is played at the generally such a high rate of speed. The goals come very, very quickly. But you certainly don't want to get down 2 nothing at home, and this is what Pennsylvania's done. And the scary part about it is they're just not getting the scoring opportunities. And Coach Mix, this is a good timeout. Uh, you're allowed two per half. He brings them over. He sees he's down a couple of goals and says, hey, we got to get it together. we got to create some more offense. we got to be able to get a little bit closer to the goal. The idea, obviously, is to set up the better shot to get closer to the goal. They've not been able to do that. Pennsylvania is a fairly young team, and without their senior leader, Ryan Taylor, much of their offense goes through him when he's playing. Maybe they're still kind of looking for him in their minds. Well, they may be looking for him in their minds, but he's not going to be out there in the field. They're going to have to overcome this. Because, uh, again, you know, it's early in the game, but you don't want to fall behind four or five goals. And unless Pennsylvania can generate some offense, it's extremely possible it can happen that, that DeMarzo was wide open setting up that last pass down at the other end. They're going to have to check him a little bit closer. Oh, there's a seam. You can be sure that Delaware's DeMarzo will find it. We've seen that here in the first quarter. As he has helped the Blue Hens to a 2 to nothing lead. As Pennsylvania prepares to bring the ball in with 7.09 to go in the first quarter. This is Chip Galley, number 23 for Pennsylvania. Gets Ideal it behind the net for Connell. Ideally, coming out of a timeout, you want to really get something going here. Work a set play if the opportunity presents itself. Certainly, if you don't score, you want to get a real good scoring opportunity out of it. Connell and Galley play catch behind the blue hand net. This is Connell. Spins. Nobody's open for Pennsylvania, and a lot of the players out high just kind of standing around. No cutters making their move towards the net. Now they've got to get some motion out there. They've got to move around a little bit. These guys can let these guys throw the ball around behind the net all night long. Try it again. Connell starts it up. Checked well by Miner. Looks like E.J. Youngling's the guy they're trying to work free there, and he's being checked off in there by Rich Volpe. Galley works on Welshmer. The two goal scorers for Delaware, Delaware Miner and Welshmer, doing a good job defensively here, stopping the Quakers from getting anything started. Andy Crofton and, and Youngling look like the guys are trying to get it to. Youngling made another break to the net, but was stopped there by Volpe again. Penn's had that ball now behind that net, John, for about a minute and 20 seconds now. Connell. Not allowing them to cut that <laughs> corner. They're just not allowing them to cut that corner. Trying to generate something from behind the net, and as stingy as Delaware is, Pennsylvania is being pretty stingy in its own right, not wanting to just toss it back out and not get what exactly what they want. And Cali was knocked to the turf. And I believe a penalty coming up against Delaware. A 30-second foul will send the Delaware player off, the technical foul, and uh, it will be 30 seconds, and Pennsylvania will have the man opportunity, as in the penalty area down there is number 19, Bob Welshmer. For Welshmer now, three penalty minutes on the season. Pennsylvania has had some trouble on the man advantage, just five of 39 when they are up a man. Well, let's see if they can get a little more movement now with the ball. Goodman with the ball out high, has Briggs. Briggs down low, Good. Crofton feeds it to number 18, Vic Sue, and he was robbed by Blaylock. Blaylock, a good job to get out on Sue and stop him from getting a good shot off. I'll tell you, Victor Sue had a wide open net looking right at him and was not able to make it. Tough break there for Pennsylvania. Right, the penalty is now over. So make it five of 40 on the season for Pennsylvania on the man advantage. Sue from a sharp angle gets it to Briggs in front score. And Vern Briggs, a good job of showing some patience. And Briggs used all six feet one inch. He kind of got up on his toes and fired that ball over the shoulder of the keeper, Jamie Blaylock. And it's now 2-1 as Pennsylvania gets some offense going and is now half this lead. It looked like Sue was taking a shot, but obviously it was a pass to Briggs and a real good one. He had a lot of mustard on this pass. See how Briggs got up there on his toes there, just threw the ball over the shoulder 
of the keeper, Jamie Blaylock, and it's now 2-1. Gelbard and Dolsky and Tobin controls for Pennsylvania as the Quakers have moved to within a goal with 4.35 to go in the first quarter. Tobin loses the ball, loses his stick. Nobody can pick it up, and then there's a whistle. And it looks like a violation against 30 Pennsylvania. Second. Yep, 30-second uh, penalty coming up here. You saw when Tobin lost that stick, he had one of the long sticks, like picking up the telephone pole, those <laughs> things are so long. Correction, that's going to go against uh, Delaware. It's going to be DeMarzo going off for 30 seconds. All right, Pennsylvania will have another opportunity here. Pennsylvania 0 for 1 on the power play so far tonight. Looking to get up to 50%. Pass intercepted by Barnard, number 34, and then he had it intercepted back by Crofton. Crofton got up. He's not a real big guy, just 5'8", but he got up to knock that ball down and keep Pennsylvania on the offensive. Briggs, the goal scorer, flips it for Greenberg. Now back to Briggs out high. Normally, that's the position Ryan Taylor would be on the man advantage. Penalty is now over. The pass from Briggs goes awry for Goodman. Crofton cannot catch up to it. Delaware will bring the ball in. 3.49 to go here in the first quarter of play for Franklin Field. Delaware leading the University of Pennsylvania 2-1. And here come the Hens. Phillips takes it away for Pennsylvania. And now Goodman will bring it back for the Quakers. The Quakers have had the territorial advantage here in the first quarter, but they trail on the scoreboard 2-1. That's a tribute to the Delaware defense. They have just not allowed Pennsylvania much. Pennsylvania obviously is going to have to move the ball inside here. Delaware content to leave them fool around with it on the outside and on the fringes all night long. Crofton stumbles behind the net. Oak checked by Barnard. Barnard's kept a close eye on Crofton throughout the first quarter. And they come together and the violation is against Crofton, a little bit too aggressive with the elbow. And we'll go over to Delaware. You see the keeper Blaylock moving out with that ball. Now he gets it back to the long stick. Crofton buzzing around, trying to be the pest. Stamos gets it ahead for Miner. And the long pass for Glowacki. He cannot handle it. He had Tony Phillips all over him. Glowacki picked it up, but there was a whistle. Pennsylvania will have possession. Oh, pardon me. Delaware called a timeout in the brief moment that they did have possession. So with 2.35 to go in the first, the Blue Hens up 2-1, to one, despite the fact that Pennsylvania has had the ball a very long time. And even though they've had it, they haven't had much offense. No, they have not, but uh, they show a little more spark in the last five minutes of this quarter than they have in the early moments. They were able to crack the Delaware defense just a little bit. Both of these teams, of course, uh, involved in uh, league play. Pennsylvania involved in the Ivy League, one of the top conferences in the country. Princeton has all been locked up the Ivy League right now. Princeton, Brown, Yale, Cornell, Pennsylvania, Harvard, and Dartmouth, the way it leads top to bottom. On the other side of the coin, the Blue Hens of Delaware belong to the North Atlantic Conference and currently leading that league. They are 2-0 ahead of New Hampshire, Vermont, Hartford, and Drexel. As we told you, coming into the game, the Blue Hens were ranked 18th in the country. And snow and the bad weather early on has played havoc with a lot of the schedules. A lot of the teams by now would have been completed their schedule or 12 or 13 games played, John. If you go down the top 20 teams in the country right now, a lot of them have only played eight and nine games. The blizzard uh, was quite a problem for the Blue Hens. They bust up to West Point to play Army. They got there. The snow was just about to start. They got on the bus, and they turned around and came home before it got a chance to snow them in, <laughs> which turned out to be a good move. They probably would have been stuck there for three or four days. Then they go back up later in the week, and they finished plowing off the field about five minutes before game time. There were no room for benches because all they did was plow the field, no sidelines or anything. It was almost like box lacrosse. Kind of an odd experience for Bob Schillinglaw and his Blue Hens. Pennsylvania will bring this ball in with 2.12 to go in the first quarter. Long pass taken on a hop. 
by Brian Napolitano, who is into the game for the first time. G.W. Mix going to his bench early and often here in the first quarter. Youngling gives it up for Briggs, the Pennsylvania goal scorer. Behind the net, Andy Lipitsky sets it up, gives it up to Crofton. Now Greenberg. Lopes behind the net. Pennsylvania hasn't had very much success generating offense from behind the net. Usually that's where all of your offense will come from, or 75% of it, but so far nothing for the Quakers. They haven't even be able, been able to get a pass to someone in front. Greenberg. Checked hard by Welshmer. Finds he has nowhere to go and gives it up to Goodman. Goodman will try Mike Miner. Welshmer and Miner really have been tough defending the Quakers, trying to get it out in front. 1-10 to go in the first quarter. Lipitsky, Crofton, and Briggs are the guys who are trying to break free there. And they're just not able to get by that wall, that Delaware defense. Greenberg controls as we enter the final minute of the first quarter. Now gives it up for Goodman. Goodman trying to race in front. Nowhere to go. Fakes gets a shot off. Pretty good shot, but it was just wide. Pennsylvania will bring it in. As he tried to catch Blaylock napping, and not a bad thought at all by Goodman. I'll tell you, Mike Miner did a good job. He's a big guy, 6'2", 190, and so is Goodman, 5'11", 190. Both of those guys are really put together, and they just kind of collided right there in front of the keeper, Blaylock. And it was Miner who came out on top and was able to force Goodman into taking out the type of shot he wanted to take. Under 30 seconds in the first quarter, E.J. Youngling can't find an opening for the Quakers. Gives it up for Greenberg. Greenberg working on Welshmer. Spins by him. Nice move by Greenberg, but Welshmer has the foot speed to catch up, and Greenberg fires it home anyhow. With 15 seconds to go in the quarter, Andy Greenberg ties this game at two. That's a big goal for Pennsylvania, as a good move in there by Greenberg after he was denied one spin off his defender and puts it past Playlock, and we're tied at two. Real good second effort there by Andy Greenberg, the sophomore out of Yorktown Heights, New York, and we're tied at two. Now you want to control this face off. You don't want to allow the other team a chance to sprint down the field for an opportunity. But that's exactly what Delaware has here as they control the face. Looking for someone in front. Wonder has it. He's a big goal scorer. Does not get a good shot off. And the clock will wind on down to the end of the first quarter. Pennsylvania gets a late goal. And after 15 minutes, we are tied at two. I never noticed it growing up, but my parents were kind of old, but they were cool. Because whenever us kids got bored, they'd do anything to entertain us. Gee, if we only had Prism, Pop wouldn't have to walk with that limp. Love great entertainment? Then look to Prism for over 100 different movies a month. Hits like Lethal Weapon 3 and Batman Returns. To order Prism, dial 1-800-CABLE-ME. Call now and get 4 dollars installation or a free upgrade plus two free Phillies tickets. You wouldn't believe the stuff Mom would do when we were really bored. If there's one thing a professional painter can say to a do-it-yourself, it's this. Don't do it yourself. Get some help. Ask Sherwin Williams. The answer? Good paint, good price, and good advice. Guaranteed. I rely on these guys for almost everything. You know, a professional painting crew wouldn't even start a job until they got all the help they needed. You shouldn't either. Pros, no. Ask Sherwin Williams. Welcome back to Franklin Field. John Miller with John McAdams on a gorgeous night at Franklin Field. And after 15 minutes, the Quakers and the Blue Hens tied at two as the officials do the post-first quarter stick check. That they did, and if they would find a illegal stick, it would be a three-minute penalty non-releasable. They do that on a random basis. And the Pennsylvania player that had his check was Mike Tobin. And the Delaware player that had his check was John Wonder. All right, we mentioned face-offs are important, and here we start the second 15 minutes of play. And there's a good look at that draw there. They work hard. Brian 
for Delaware and Gelbard for Pennsylvania. And Brian controls it. And Brian is a familiar name to lacrosse fans. It's because his father is the guy who manufactures all the lacrosse equipment that everybody uses. Kind of gives him a leg up, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they ought to check his stick. <laughs> My equipment bag happens to be a Brian, too, if that matters any. <laughs> I hope that doesn't constitute a conflict of interest for you. No, 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 that was, that was, <laughs> no, that was a gift from doing the uh, final four here. Yeah, last always year. taking gifts, yeah, you know, always got uh, a handout. You know, you never buy me anything, what am I gonna do? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Delaware controlling as they've switched ends of the field. Just underway here in the second quarter, tied at two. Delaware jumped out to a two to nothing lead. But the Quakers have come back here with a methodical offense. Now the Blue Hens setting things up. Hey, if you're Pennsylvania here, what you don't want to do is give up a quick goal after working so hard to get the two that they got. DeMarzo's pass out high for Ryan Kelly was off the mark. So the Quakers will bring it in with exactly one minute gone in the second quarter. Each team took one timeout during that first quarter. They each have one more to spend. They get two per half. Chet with the ball for Pennsylvania, gets it ahead. Greenberg looking to set things up. Nice goal by Greenberg in the final minute of the first quarter to tie this game. Just a solid individual effort. And that's something the Quakers might need if they're going to generate some offense. There hasn't been a whole lot of open men to pass to so far in this game for the Quakes. Hey, this though, John, Delaware has proven, as you said before, good men. Goodman with the individual effort, and that's exactly what we were talking about. And he spins and fires it home, and Pennsylvania has scored three straight goals and now has the lead. Goodman there, you see, is a big, strong guy. We told you before, 5'11", 190 pounds, but really built solid and used that bulk and that weight to get a free shot. And Pennsylvania's come back with three unanswered goals here after trailing early 2-0. Alex Goodman just backed his way in there. It was a matter of bulk. Kevin Reich took the face off for Pennsylvania against Brian. The scramble, and it's picked up by Mike Tobin, who is always around the loose balls, it seems. He leads the Quakers in ground balls. I mentioned to you before, John, that Delaware has the propensity for being scored against. In the last four games, they have allowed 54 goals against, so they can be scored upon. Lipitsky gives it up for Crofton and then out high to Vern Briggs. Loops it to the middle for Greenberg. Goodman, who just scored the goal a moment ago. Guarded by Mike Miner, tries to spin on him. He's inside of him, right in front. Good save, Blaylock. In front, they bat at it. And a violation against the Quakers for coming into the crease as Lipitsky went up high and tried to slap it out of the air into the net. I'll tell you, Blaylock had to be quick here, as you'll see, with that stick. And he just kind of picks that ball and bats it away and had his left foot, you saw there, braced against the goalpost for balance. Barnard tried to come up to midfield and then had it knocked away from him. Pennsylvania will bring it in. And you see the subs coming in and out on the bench area. Delaware last year finished the season at eight and seven. They were the North Atlantic Conference champions. Obviously, they're not going to be able to get to that lofty heights now with just three games left, but have a very good possibility of winning the North Atlantic Conference once again this year as they're undefeated thus far in the league. Pennsylvania last year was four and nine on the overall season. They're four and eight now, and with a win either in this game or against Georgetown, or, get, or in both, they would have an opportunity to vastly improve on last year's record. Pass out high for Lagator was knocked away, and back comes Delaware. Tom Fair with the ball. And Fair just flies in the open field. Leaves it up to DeMarzo, and DeMarzo hits the cutting Welshmer out high. They swing it behind for DeMarzo. This is where he's at his most dangerous, looking for Wonder over on the side of the net. At a sharp angle, tried to bounce it by Basford, but Basford was right on the post. DeMarzo's already set up both of the hen goals thus far as Pennsylvania changed them up on the fly. Hens will bring it in. Virginia! 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 
Stamos out at the 30-yard line. Makes his move, spins away. Still can't get inside the Quaker defense as RCC put a stick on it. DeMarzo with a sharp pass to Wonder. Wonder gives it up for Jason DiCarlo, number eight. Now out high to Stamos. And whenever DeMarzo gets near the front of that net, Mike Tobin is on him, and Mike Tobin's now going behind him to challenge him somewhat. Now you see Tobin staying right with him. Ryan Kelly worked off the pick from DeMarzo. Gives it up to Stamos. Inside shot, score! Stamos was able to bob and weave his way through the Pennsylvania defense, shot the ball low, and scores, and we're tied at three. And just keep an eye here on number four, Tom Stamos, the junior from Glen Cove, New York. He just saw him break inside, put the ball down low, and beat Steve Basford, and we're tied at three. Great quickness by Stamos. And he's a guy that Pennsylvania knows something about. He had a hat trick in last year's game with the Quakers. You see him battling on that face off there. Coming away with it is Rusi of Delaware. Gives it up for DeMarzo. DeMarzo swings it to Minor. Kelly back for Boyce, and Boyce shot was muffled. If Pennsylvania doesn't win a couple more of these faceoffs, John, GW Mix indicated perhaps they might bring a long stick up on the faceoffs because they're so, so important in this particular game. Four and a half minutes into the second quarter, tied at three as RCC brings it in for Pennsylvania. The pace picking up here in the second quarter after a tentative first period. Burn breaks, flips it behind for Andy Lipitsky, who's seen a fair amount of action here today. We didn't see him a whole lot in the first Pennsylvania game we did against Drexel. Briggs trying to set something up, looking for somebody to get loose. Goodman has one of the Pennsylvania goals. From the far sideline, starts off against Welshmer, trying to just beat him with flat-out speed. Can't do it, gives it to Crofton in front for Greenberg. The pass was knocked away. They scramble for it. Still nobody has a handle on it. Miner flips it back. And after it is the keeper, Blaylock, and he finally tracks it down near the sideline. Crofton's going to give him a hard time. Look at In that. In front, there's nobody there. Lipitsky after it for Pennsylvania, and a nice diving play by Miner to poke it away before Lipitsky could get to it. Hey, a Miner mishandled that ball in front and came very close to seeing that ball roll into his own net. Stamos, who scored a moment ago. Gives it up for DeMarzo. In front, Wonder! Save Basford. Phillips had the handle on it, then gave it up, and the shot comes wide of Basford as Stamos picked up the loose ball. And Stamos, you see, uh, used that AstroTurf to try to bounce it past Basford. The ball just bounced wide, and it'll be Pennsylvania ball. Basford's made a couple of big saves here in the early going. In fact, both keepers have made some good stops. Certainly have. Both teams keeping fresh troops in there. See them coming in from the side off the horn. We're tied at 3-3 here on a gorgeous night for any kind of a sporting event. Look out, John. We see the skyline of the great city of Philadelphia. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous night. Delaware brings it in. 8.55 to go. Barnard, who's done a real good job checking Andy Crofton so far, brings it towards the middle of the field. I saw the back of your picture there. The goalkeeper, Blaylock, is up at the 20-yard line. He's way out of his net. Boyce gives it up. They swing it, and the shot that bounced home by Kevin Ellers. Ellers with the goal, and it looked like Basford got his feet tangled up. Okay, number two, Kevin Ellers really got some oomph on that. All right, there you see Basford. Basford backing up now towards the net. Trying to by the follow two. the shot. Now Kevin it'll come from the outside there on Kevin Ellers, and it goes right into the goal. You saw where the AstroTurf again came into play. Ryan Kelly picked up an assist on the goal. That's his second of the evening. So it's a 4-3 to three Delaware lead. 
And the Quakers now set something up looking to equalize. Crofton bounces it home. I'll tell you, the young freshman out of Garden City, New York, made it easy there. They found them wide open, about 15 yards from the goal. And just watch for yourself what happens. He bounces it about five or six feet in front of goalkeeper Blaylock, and it goes into Manette of Pennsylvania, comes right back to tie. Pennsylvania goal by number five, Andy Crofton. All of the goals against Blaylock have beaten him up high. He seems to be a little tentative getting the stick up near his face or maybe hesitates and just freezes a moment when the ball's coming at his head. That's where Pennsylvania's beaten them all four times. This game tied at four with 8-10 to go in the second quarter. She saw a game here back and forth. Rusi for Delaware controls and flips it to Ryan Kelly, who's got some open ground and comes in and scores. Well, you, Nobody was... picked up Ooh. Kelly. What a great play by Kelly as he just literally came in from the far side. And you'll see he'll take the shot right around waist high. There's the pass to him. Here he comes in. Boom. Boy, you got a lot of oomph behind that. But again, John, you're coming in unchecked. Well, the game tied for only about half a minute. Big night for Kelly so far with a goal and two assists. Rolled by Delaware. Kelly has the ball again. Flips it towards the middle and over the defenders. In front for Wonder. DeMarzo with a brilliant feed for John Wonder, who only had to push it home. DeMarzo sets up his third goal of the evening. And again, making it look easy. Watch right here. Boom. As Wonder puts it right by. And Pennsylvania, seeing the wheels come off the wagon here, decides to call a timeout with seven minutes and 50 seconds to go in the second quarter and the hens have come back with two very very quick markers to take a 6-4 lead the quakers breaking down defensively twice there in the last minute and gw mix can't be at all happy with those two defensive breakdowns now the one for the goal by kelly nobody picks him up coming in from the right side and then all of a sudden they look in front demarzo finds wonder wide open and it results in two scores for Delaware, and uh, they're up 6-4 here. The way this game is going back and forth, back and forth, but again, you don't want to give up the easy ones, John. Bells, Bells, key. The key thing right now is we've gotten the ground balls. We've gotten the ground balls. Eric Bryan, down defensive end. See, they're talking about the hustle and picking up the ground balls, and Blue Ends have done a good job of hustling after the ball, and they've also done a good job bouncing back because Pennsylvania seems to have solved the defensive alignment of the Blue Hens that uh, had them stalemated for much of the first quarter. Good work there by our cameraman, John Tucker down there, getting you right into the huddle. Now an important face-off, and do I see a long stick coming out for this face-off? Looks like Tony Phillips yep. will take it. That's exactly the what they said they were gonna do if they could not get the job done. Uh, with uh, Gilbard or Rice, she was going to go with a long stick, and that's exactly what's happening here as well, Tony Phillips will do it. He'll go against Eric Bryan. Bryan is an excellent faceoff man for the Blue Hens. He's got one of their best faceoff percentages in years, and despite the long stick, Bryan controls it, but then couldn't pick it up because he dropped his stick, and Mike Tobin has it for Pennsylvania, so even though Bryan wins it, he doesn't control the ball. Crofton for Pennsylvania, gives it up to Rick Curry. They go behind the net for CC Lagator. Okay. He's had a tough time finding anybody in front. Okay, coming off a timeout, John, you want to make something happen. Bounces a shot that went over the net, and as he went down, the flag goes down, and there should be a penalty against Delaware as Adam Allen brought down Lagator, and Lagator is a little bit shaken up. All right, that's going to be a 30-second violation, and heading to the box will be Tom Fair and he will be out for the next 30 and you just see he just literally dragged him down right in front just kind of only got an arm around him and pulled him down Looks like I just pulled you down oh. well Fair is no stranger to the penalty box 13 and a half minutes in penalties so far on the season now all right Pennsylvania wants to capitalize here if they can and a good defensive play there breaking it up was Adam Allen
Delaware will bring it in and try to take some time off the clock as they are shorthanded. They had the man advantage and you turn the ball over. Boy, that's got to be calling, John. Dolsky lost it, but controlled by Ellers, who flipped it back for Dolsky. And Ellers retrieves the loose ball again. He gets mugged by Vic Zhu. Did he ever? Crofton gets it ahead for Jason McLean, who had Blaylock going the wrong way, but Blaylock was able to cover the far corner. But that was a great play by Blaylock, as he was just able to get that cross on that great, great play. Delaware has the ball down behind the Pennsylvania net, and that will kill off the penalty, and it is over, so they're at even strength, and Pennsylvania continues to struggle with the man advantage. All right, Delaware calls a timeout, but just keep your eye here on the Delaware keeper here. What a great play the Playlock makes as he was caught going one way and was able to just deflect the ball away. Now, Delaware calls a timeout, but none of the players are coming over. Uh, I guess they didn't give it to him for some reason. DeMarzo controlling behind the net, tries to wind his way out in front, looking for someone, gets the pass there, but it was knocked away by Pennsylvania. Stephen Marks tries to come away with it for the Quakers. He cannot, hacks at the ball, picked up now by Phil Perry, and Perry sprints over midfield. Gives it up for Crofton. Crofton's got one goal, but he hasn't had a whole lot of room to move for Pennsylvania. There you see the changing. They must wait till they get across that line before Greenberg. the others can come in. Greenberg right off the bench, fires wide. That was a great shot of the subs going in and out. They must cross that line. One player coming out before another can go in. Pennsylvania set to bring it in. As you saw Greenberg sprint right off the bench and walk right on in, but shoot wide. Greenberg with the ball now. With Goodman behind the net. And a whistle on the field. It can't be a timeout by the Quakers because they've used up their two. I think there's a question about the clock. Apparently the clock had stopped moving, so they're fixing up the clock. And they seem to have the problem straightened out now, so Pennsylvania will bring it in again. We'll start it over. Crofton. For Lipitsky behind the net, swings it to Lagatour. Out high, Briggs, now Goodman. Lipitsky gives it up for Lagator as the Quakers swing it around the goal, trying to keep Blaylock's feet moving. Get him uh, turning every which way. Crofton looking for somebody in front. No one's open. He'll give it up to Lipitsky. Lipitsky looking for somebody. Takes a stick, but able to get it to Vern Briggs. Briggs fake the pass behind the net. Comes out high to Goodman. Pass from Crofton bounces over towards Briggs as somebody from Delaware got a stick on it. Goodman gives it up for Crofton. Again, the Quakers very patient offensively, and Delaware playing stalwart defense. Lagator, he can't find anybody in front. They bring it out high. They've been on the perimeter the entire time. Crofton closes, fires a shot, and it was knocked down by Tom Fair, and I don't think Fair enjoyed that much. I seem to catch him right on the shoulder. They are padded somewhat, but I'll tell you, Crofton got every bit of that shot as it bounced off Fair. There's the ground level shot. Literally ground level shot there. All right, Pennsylvania now trying to make something happen. They trail by a pair as we're down to four and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Andy Greenberg's had the ball a lot tonight for Pennsylvania. Looking for somebody to break open. But again, the Quakers not doing a whole lot of cutting out high. Nobody's kind of standing around. Greenberg, pushed by Welshmer, pushed again by Welshmer, spins away, can't find anybody open, gives it up to Goodman. Goodman can't control it, and the Quakers turn the ball over to the Blue Hens. This is a game, thus far, the goals have come in bunches. Delaware has gotten two. Pennsylvania came back to tie it at two. Pennsylvania went ahead three to two. Then Delaware got a pair to go ahead four to three. Penn ties it up at 4-4, and Delaware scored the last two. I guess using that mathematics, Penn should be next to score. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the way it works? That's not, we don't even have to play the game. <laughs> That's no fun. 
Levitsky thought about firing, but he was out a little bit too far. Elects to go behind the net for Crofton. Now Levitsky has it back. Briggs has a seam, and Levitsky doesn't give it to him. He goes behind the net for Crofton. When Briggs had that seam, though, he was converged upon immediately by four Delaware defenders. Delaware's done a real good job defensively this evening. Greenberg gives it up for Crofton. They swing it to the far side. Now out for Briggs, and Goodman out high. Tries to get it to Crofton, does he? Bounces one wide, controlled by Lagator in front, and Crofton couldn't get his stick on it. Comes all the way out to midfield with three minutes to go in the half. Picked up by Goodman as Pennsylvania will stay on offense. Crofton in front for Lipitsky. Lipitsky just waist high, just line that ball past Jamie Blaylock, and it is now a 6-5 game as Lipitsky found himself open. Watch for number 14 right there. And he put lots of oomph behind that, and there's a good look at Andy Lipitsky, senior out of Lemoyne, Pennsylvania. The second goal of the season for Lipitsky. Last year he had 28 points. He was an integral part of the offense, but this season he hasn't seen as much time and he hasn't been able to get untracked. Long stick used again on the draw. Ball still free. Picked up now by Mike Miner of Delaware. First time Delaware's touched the ball in a while and the whistle blows. And Tony Phillips not real happy with the way things are going and if you're gonna push and shove a little bit. Not That's in front not of the, the place to bench. do it. <laughs> not in front of the Delaware bench. And Delaware takes their last time out, so each team has now used their allotment of timeouts, and this game, which has just literally gone back and forth, back and forth, and with 2.40 to go, John, Pennsylvania's battled back to within one. Probably the timeout taken here by Schillinglaw because his team's been playing defense for so long, and that's usually more tiring than playing offense. And chance to rest the legs a little bit for the last couple of minutes of the half because when things aren't necessarily going your way through the course of the season this is the time when things typically will fall apart in the last couple of minutes of a period or of a half and a big momentum changer often for a team and we mentioned right from the start as you see the Delaware huddle there these two teams really uh, I look right from the get-go that uh, it would end up being a very close game things going back and forth and Pennsylvania has really taken uh, advantage of most of the scoring opportunities that have been given to them. They haven't had an awful lot of them, but uh, they've taken advantage of it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I would imagine the ball is going to be in the hands of DeMarzo here as much as possible to try to set something up for the Blue Hands. DeMarzo now is setting himself up behind the Pennsylvania goal. GW Mix settles in for the last two minutes and 40 seconds of the half. Talking to GW yesterday, he wasn't real thrilled to see us because the last time we saw him, his team lost to Drexel for the first time <laughs> since Eisenhower was president. And as the ball comes right in front, and Bassford, a good job of covering his net. GW said uh, that the Drexel loss was his most devastating loss in 33 years of life. That's Ouch. covering a lot of territory. Boy. I mean, at least we know how old he is now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did want to credit the Drexel players for playing very well in that game, but he said in terms of the ramifications for his program as he tries to rebuild it and get it going in the right direction again, it was a tremendous setback, and he was still, two weeks later, very upset about it. But you know, at the other end of the coin, that has helped change the Drexel program around. Randy Boyd's team is now 5-5 five and five with two, uh, three games to go. And uh, they came into that game with just one win. So they've, they've won four of their last five. In fact, one of those losses for Drexel was a blowout at the hands of Delaware. Lipitsky guns a pass in front for Crofton a little bit too high. A minute 34 to go in the half. And Delaware will bring the ball in as they lope down into offensive position. You're right, the Hens really laid it on the Dragons. 23 to 11 was the score of that game. This is the 26th game in this series between Pennsylvania and Delaware, and the Quakers hold a commanding 20 to 5 lead in the series, which began back in 1951. I think Eisenhower was president then. <laughs> Speaking of Mr. Eisenhower, certainly was to be very quickly. Delaware won the game last year, 11-9, breaking a five-game pen win streak. Good defensive play in front by Tony Phillips to knock the pass away from the Blue Hens. DeMarzo picks it up and zips a pass to Ryan Kelly. Kelly winds his way out in front. He finds himself owned by the ball. 
knocked away by Phillips at the last moment, and Basford covers. 105 to go in the half, and Pennsylvania brings it up onto offense, looking for the tying goal. They trail six to five. Wouldn't be surprised if they slow it down here a little bit and try to get that last shot. We saw them do that in the Drexel game as well, John. Lipitsky controls behind the net, guarded by Fair, gives it up to Crofton, who is guarded by Barnard, and Barnard has been in Crofton's face the entire first half. Tries to make a move, and Barnard gives him a whack. Keeps the stick in his face, gets it up a little bit high. Crofton will not be deterred. Spins in, gets the left-handed shot off, and Blaylock had to be quick to make that stop. He's been quick all evening long. He's done a fine job in the nets for Delaware. Jamie Blaylock, Jr. out of Whitehall, Maryland. Welshmer brings it back. The shot knocked down in front. Welshmer picks it up, tries to get the left-handed drive off. Still has control and finally loses it as he was bumped by Vern Briggs. 13 seconds to go in the half. Greenberg can't get started. Has some trouble on the handle. Now picks it up with eight seconds to go. He's knocked to the turf. A flag goes down and a whistle blows with five seconds to go in the half. And DeMarzo is going to be sitting it out for the next 30 seconds as he pushed from behind and he will come across the field and he will be in the box for the last five seconds of this second quarter. You see him coming across right there, passing the 50-yard line. And heading for the sideline, second time that he has been penalized this evening. Pennsylvania only has five seconds to try and get something on goal here. Vic Sue will bring it in for the Quakers, guarded by one of the Delaware long sticks, and that's a an attempt to stop the long pass from Sue. And he will just waste out the clock. And the Quakers will go to intermission happy to trail by just a goal. Surprised they didn't try something offensively there? Uh, yeah, I am. I, you, you have to take advantage of every second you can. But now with Pennsylvania get an opportunity to regroup, they know for the first 25 seconds of the third quarter, John, they're going to have the man advantage to try to get the equalizer. Six to five, Delaware ahead after 30 minutes, the second half coming up. into the dead man's shoes. Spencer have a first name? He called himself Bob. Officially, I don't exist. Here you go. He followed the trail to White Sands. This is about creating enemies when there aren't any. I don't ever get involved in these kinds of deals. Give a half million bucks to a man you don't even know? Where truth is the ultimate disguise. I've never met anyone like you. You're honest, even when you're lying. Willem Dafoe, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, and Mickey Rourke. White Sands, the most dangerous place to be. Welcome back to Franklin Field in West Philadelphia. I'll look at the skyline as the sun goes down over the city of brotherly love. The Quakers trailing by a goal after 30 minutes. Pennsylvania controlled the ball for much of the first half, but really didn't have a whole lot of offensive thrusts towards the net. They didn't have a whole lot of cutters making their moves in front, and I think it's pretty apparent that they do miss Ryan Taylor. No, I think it's apparent that's absolutely true. However, you know, Pennsylvania made the most of their scoring opportunities. And uh, this has been a, really a weird game, John. It was 2-2 after one. The biggest lead for anybody has been two goals. Came into the second period with Delaware outscoring Pennsylvania by a goal, four to three. Now, the key part here is remember now that Delaware is going to be short for 25 seconds. Anthony DeMarzo will sit out the first 25 seconds of this third quarter. And Pennsylvania will try to get the equalizer here. Pennsylvania's had a little difficulty with the face-offs this evening. I'll be curious to see what they do here to start the third quarter. Uh, they started the game off uh, with uh, Joe Gilbard. Then they went to Kevin Reich. And then a long stick, Tony Phillips, came in to take a couple. So it'll be interesting to see if they stay with the long stick or they go back to plan A or maybe he has a plan D. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. 
we look at the Delaware bench. Specifically, it'll be interesting here as they go on the man advantage because possession will be paramount. It's only a 25 second power play because five seconds of it were in the first half. Well, what they're gonna have to do is just get the ball and go right down the field very, very quickly. They change the goals here for the third quarter. No indication yet who's going to take the face off for the red and blue. 11 different goal scorers with one goal apiece in the first half for Pennsylvania, Alex Goodman, Andy Crofton, Andy Greenberg, Andy Lipitsky, and Vern Briggs. So I guess he needed to be named Andy to score a goal for Pennsylvania there. As there is no faceoff, Pennsylvania just brings it right in to start the half. For Delaware, Ellers, Stamos, Wonder Minor, Welshmer, and Kelly were the goal scorers as the Quakers set things up. Just five seconds to go on the power play as they pass it around the periphery. All right, it's over. Greenberg. Give it up to McLean now for Goodman. Bounces a shot over the top of Blaylock. The Quakers will bring this ball in. Burn Briggs out high, gives it up for Jason McLean, who didn't see a whole lot of time in the first half. Played a little bit at the end of the second quarter. Greenberg on the far side, flips it behind for Crofton. Crofton in front for McLean, and the pass cut by him. Comes all the way out to midfield. DeMarzo was there for Delaware, but it's scooped up by Tony Phillips. A whistle blows, and a push will be called against Pennsylvania. So Delaware's ball, and Bob Schillinglaw likes that. Now at the other end there, give some uh, credit to Scott, Scott Barnard, who kind of hastened Andy Crofton from getting rid of that ball as he came up with that long stick and sort of give him a jab with it. Miner brings it in for the Hens. Gives it up for Dolsky. Behind the net to DeMarzo, guarded by Tony Phillips. Ryan Kelly, who was one of the Delaware goals, gives it up for Stamos. Stamos looking to get something off with the left hand. Goes behind to Wonder, who has a little bit of trouble on the handle. Guarded by Alex Goodman. Wonder, rushing the net. Comes out in front, gives it up for Miner. Miner in front, a shot that bounced wide of Bassford. Miner paid the price. I think Tony Phillips in there to disrupt that shot just a little bit, number two for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has one more game left on the season. We tell you they'll play Georgetown here at Franklin Field on Sunday, May the 8th, while the Blue Hens uh, have three more. They play Penn State at home. They'll have a pair of North Atlantic Conference games at Vermont, who was nationally ranked, and also have a game left against New Hampshire before their season comes to a close also on the 8th of May. CC Lagator behind the net for Pennsylvania. Just a couple of minutes into the third quarter. No scoring here after intermission. Delaware's ahead, 6-5. to five. Goodman with the ball out high for the Quakers. Moves by Miner. Fires a long shot. Lagator down low. Ties the game up with his sixth goal of the season, and Lagator was all alone on the doorstep. I'll, I'll tell you, give credit to Goodman on that. Goodman made a great pass to Lagator. There you see Goodman with the pass to Lagator, and he puts it right in, and we are tied at six. Great play there by Pennsylvania. Looked like a shot when Goodman took it, but Lagator was all alone, right next to Blaylock. Nothing Blaylock was going to be able to do about that one. And it is Tony Phillips taking the face off for Pennsylvania, and he controls it to Curry, but a whistle blows, and Phillips a little overly aggressive there as Delaware will take the ball on the violation with 12.40 to go in the third quarter. Well, now it's back to 6-6. Pennsylvania's only had one lead in this game, but nobody's had a lead of more than a pair of goals. They just kind of seesawed back and forth. We worked the mathematics out of that in the second <laughs> quarter, John. <laughs> in front for DeMarzo, and a Penn defender, RCC landed on his chest. Ouch. Okay, that's a highlight film uh, piece right there with RCC and DeMarzo going flying. Pennsylvania will bring the ball in as the ball went over the sideline. It's going to make our highlights film right here. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> That'll make you a little reluctant to go to the goal mouth on it. Let's get the boys in the truck to keep that one. We like that one. <laughs> 
Crofton with the ball for Pennsylvania, guarded as he has been the entire night by Barnard. It gives it up for Andy Greenberg out high. Everywhere Crofton goes, Barnard goes. Crofton inhales in this game, Barnard exhales. It's exactly been that right. tight. Greenberg looking for an opening, working on Mike Miner. Miner's played some good defense here tonight for the Blue Hens. Plus he's chipped in with a goal besides. Once again, Delaware just not allowing Pennsylvania to get any of those attackmen free. Lagator out high. He's been behind the net for much of the night, but now out high. Gives it up for Lipitsky. Nowhere to go for Lipitsky. He's retreating. Guarded very closely by Tom Rusi. Ligator now comes around behind the net, and he's trying to get free, but he's being boxed in there, and now decides to move out a little bit. After the Ligator got free next to the goal, they're not going to take their eye off him very much. Greenberg gives it to Ligator at the 20. Back out high for Lepitsky. Pennsylvania has done this for much of the night, passed around the periphery, looked for an opening, and for the most part, they've had a hard time finding one. They've had the ball now for the better part of the mid-30 and just really have not been able to get close to a shot. Briggs just bowled his way in. He didn't get a very good shot off, but it was an impressive move to move into position to get it on goal. He just put his right shoulder down and just barreled towards the goal but got nothing behind the shot at all. Goodman is flagged for a violation. And I believe he will come to the box and Delaware will go on the power play. It'll be the first power play opportunity for Delaware tonight. This is going to be a one minute violation, so that's our first one of those on the evening. So you don't want to give Wonder and Kelly and DeMarzo much more open room than they need. No, they don't need a whole lot. DeMarzo's wide open right now. He's got the ball. Gives it back to Boyce for Stamos. Stamos thought about the shot. Ball comes free. Wastes some precious time. DeMarzo has it now. Thought about loading one up. Gives it up for Kelly in front for Wonder. Wonder takes it behind the net. Looked like Wonder had the open side of the net, but a good play by Tony Phillips to force him behind. DeMarzo loops one for Wonder that went awry. Pennsylvania will bring this ball in now. And a chance to wind some time off the clock. We've still got about 25 seconds to kill off. We told you before, but Delaware came into this game with a four-game losing streak. They have not lost five straight games since 1973. Willis Gay flips it behind for Lagator. And Pennsylvania should be able to run off the rest of this power play. And in fact, Goodman comes onto the field now. So a good job by the Quakers of killing that one off. Vern Briggs working on Rusi. Gives it up for Lagator. Delaware still giving no ground, John. They're still forcing Pennsylvania out where they want them and not letting the attackman get free or anybody get free for that matter. Greenberg out high. He just a minute, a minute ago, that was an excellent illustration of it, tried to cut 25 yards away from the goal, but he couldn't even get open out there. Got the ball now, but not in a position to do anything with it, really. Now he tries to wind his way out in front, trying to back down the defender. Goes left hand, and the shot he fired was a good two or three feet wide of Blaylock. John, they're just not letting him get that quick cut off the corner as they come around uh, behind the back of the net. There you see good defensive play there, and really, that's not the type of shot that he wanted. Pennsylvania has scored on a couple of those, but it's really not going to be your bread and butter. You want to try and work something for a cutter down low. Crofton behind the net. And again, Barnard right with him. Crofton has logged a lot of miles back there tonight. He's tasted that stick a couple of times from Barnard, too. Sure has. Back to the turf, remains in control. Able to get the ball to Lipitsky, who works inside of Adam Allen. Lipitsky spins through a double team, able to get it to Crofton behind the net. Crofton in front, got the shot off. And I think it hit Blaylock right in the mask. And Crofton goes into the crease, so the violation. And Blaylock took one on the chin. The 
Pitsky's knocked down there as the ball comes around on the side of the net there. Blaylock didn't know where it was. Hey, Lipitsky got a good shot there as he was knocked down. There was a stick up on him. Tad Boyce gives it up for Ryan Kelly. Kelly working on Tony Phillips. Phillips working on him with that long stick, too. <laughs> it's been a pretty physical game. The defenders have been uh, certainly not bashful. Kelly gives it up for DeMarzo behind the net and tight. Wonder could not get the shot off as he was open for a split second. Ellers with a good save from Basford. Yeah, Delaware had two good scoring opportunities there. One, they couldn't get the uh, stick on it. The, as DeMarzo, DeMarzo takes a to ride on the track over there. <laughs> <laughs> Typically the kid from Arkansas dropping the baton here the other day in the pen relays as he hit the track. Quakes come near side to Mike Tobin. 7.20 to go in the third quarter. There's where the long stick helped that pass. Boy, just over the Delaware defender. Hanjek gets it to Crofton, and now Lagator behind the net tries to spin on Adam Allen. Lagator with a stick in his face. Flag goes down. He gets a shot off that went wide as Lagator just wrapped it around Allen, and Allen will head to the box. Good shot by Lagator just to get the shot off. All right, that's going to be a 30-second penalty. Quakers 0 for 3 on the power play tonight. And on the season now, they're five for 42. So it's been a sore spot, and I guess you would expect it to continue to be without Ryan Taylor in there to generate some offense in case you're just joining us. Taylor, the leading goal scorer for the Quakers, not playing tonight because of a knee injury. They think he may have a ruptured bursa sack. If that's the case, he could come back and play the last couple of games. But, uh, it's going to be difficult for him to come back for the last couple of games of his senior year. Really a shame for him to end his collegiate career that way. No question. And just to show you what he... Crofton down low and a nice feed from Goodman. Gives Pennsylvania the lead with 6.38 to go in the third. Crofton with the goal. And again, Goodman with a nice pass from out high to a player right on the doorstep, and that was one of the few times Barnard gave Crofton more than a couple of inches. I'll tell you, Goodman has made two picture-perfect passes here in this third quarter that have resulted in setting up Pennsylvania goals. Delaware looking for the equalizer. DeMarzo controlling, getting whacked by Phillips. He's done a pretty good job on DeMarzo over the last uh, 15, 20 minutes of the game. And DeMarzo goes down, and coming away with it is Mike Tobin. Pennsylvania has scored the last three goals here of the game. Crofton took his eye off the ball and lost it back to Delaware as the Quakers were in transition for one of the few times tonight. Blaylock trying to generate something. Gives it up for Stamos. Stamos guarded by Tobin. Gets whacked a couple of times. Now the double team comes from Rick Curry, goes behind the net to DeMarzo. Arcisi's in DeMarzo's way. He gives the ball up to Glowacki. Glowacki gives it up for Miner. Miner in tight, goes left hand, a good shot, and a better save by Basford. Whistle blows down low, and there is a flag down on the far side. It looks like it might be a penalty against Delaware. All right, so one minute for slashing call coming up. And it will be against Tom Rusi, apparently. He appears to be the guy in the box. No, nope, make it oh, the other way. Oh. It's going against <laughs> Mike Tobin. So it is a one-minute penalty against Tobin. So now the Hens will find themselves down a goal, have an opportunity to get the equalizer. The flag was out high. It looked like it was away from the play, but Tobin was down low. I'm not sure what that was. Wonder couldn't get the shot in on goal as it was muffled. Coming out with it is Stephen Marks for Pennsylvania. Bounces away from him. Controlled by Tad Boyce. Gets it ahead to DeMarzo. DeMarzo has Wonder down low, but he's double teamed. DeMarzo will set things up for the Blue Hands. Gives it up to Ryan Kelly. And now back to DeMarzo. That's where the Blue Hands want the ball. Out high. Boyce gives it to Kelly. Kelly thinking. Gets a shot off. Aimed it more than fired it. And Basford was equal to it. A good job down low by Pennsylvania's Willis Gay, who was all over John Wonder. 
And on that shot that Wonder had earlier in this power play, Wonder was off balance and the Gay just kind of helped him stay off balance a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if you get my meaning. That little nudge. <laughs> Something like that. Delaware brings it in. 4.57 to go in the third. Pennsylvania ahead by a goal, seven to six. Stamos gives it up to DeMarzo behind the net for Kelly. Kelly, sharp angle, tried to get the ball to the cutting man, which was Ellers, and it went awry. And that will do it for the power play as Pennsylvania has killed off its second consecutive one-minute man advantage, or shorthanded situation, rather. And so far, they've held the Blue Hens scoreless for the first 10 minutes of this third quarter. And Pennsylvania now enjoying their second time a one goal lead in this game and hey this this could not be any closer the way these guys are playing out here right now Adam Allen got hit hard loses the ball in front dangerous situation for the Blue Hens picked up by Lipitsky a drive was muffled in front and scooped up by Blaylock Blue Hens come away with it ahead for Dolsky Dolsky with lots of open territory along the far sideline and now the Hens will set it up, 4.08 to go in the third. Stamos has one of the blue end goals, spins, gets the left-handed shot off, but goes flying over the top of the net is a good defensive play to muffle the shot. That was by Stephen Marks, number 32. Is the ball about 40 feet in the air, John. <laughs> like a Bruce Ruffin pitch. Drive! Looked like it hit the post. It flies did. all the way back out high. Bassford was quick, but not quick enough, but he got some help from the post. Comes all the way back down to Delaware's end of the field, and having some trouble controlling it is Tom Fair. He gets bumped by McLean. Tom Fair and Lipitsky. Yeah, he's, not real, uh, he's not real happy about that either, as he took a hard bounce on the AstroTurf. Dan Connell come to the Pennsylvania bench. 3.36 to go in the third. Hey, it's not often you keep a team in men's lacrosse off the scoreboard for a period, but Pennsylvania's got a legitimate opportunity of doing that here. Especially when the team has a couple of power plays. Yep, exactly. Adam Cameras from the Sports Information Department here in Pennsylvania doing a yeoman job with the stats tonight. He's the only guy near a light, that's why. <laughs> Vic Zhu out there now, and now Briggs has the ball for Pennsylvania. Gives it up for Greenberg. Again, Delaware doing a good job of keeping Pennsylvania away. Greenberg trying to wind his way in front. Gets a shot off through the legs of Blaylock. I'll tell you, not only did he get the shot through the legs, but at the same time, Mike Miner, number 13, is all over him with a stick and sent him flying. It took great concentration there by Andy Greenberg in order to put this ball by the Delaware keeper because he knew he was going to be hit, John, and Pennsylvania up by two goals for the first time in this game. Amazing that he just got the shot off for Greenberg, his second of the night and his 10th of the season, and Phillips battling with Eric Bryan on the faceoff, and Bryan controls it, and Delaware needs to get some offense. DeMarzo. Good job by the hands off that faceoff. Tad Boyce with the ball out high now. Last year, he was the Junior College Player of the Year, leading Herkimer Junior College to the national title. Herkimer up in New York, just outside of Syracuse. Boyce goes down, lost the ball, controlled by Marks. Marks Tried to get it to Phil Perry, but it went awry. Picked up by Stamos of Delaware. Stamos brings it back. He's got really good foot speed, and he's shown that a couple of times. Very quick to the openings. Gets it behind the net for DeMarzo, and DeMarzo can't handle the funny hop. DeMarzo and Tobin talking things over there in the corner of your screen. Talking about getting together for maybe a bite afterwards? Yeah, probably. I highly doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bite on the ear. Maybe. <laughs> RCC near side, ahead for Greenberg. Marzo's already set up three goals brilliantly for the hands this evening. Less than two minutes remaining in the first. Fourth in the country in assists. 
And certainly I can see why, John, because I tell you, he's just, if you give him a little bit of opening and you get a free man, he will find him. Goodman finds an opening, bounces one over the top of the net. Crofton is the closest man to it, so he will bring it in for the Quakers. He got that bounce of that ball probably a little too far in front of the keeper there, Jamie Blaylock. There you see Greenberg, last goal scorer for Pennsylvania. Good look at him, Andy Greenberg, out of Yorktown Heights, New York. Goodman, working on Welshmer, keeps control of the ball. Goodman's had a brilliant third quarter with two great assists. A four-goal quarter here for Pennsylvania, and they have shut out Delaware so far with a minute to go. Greenberg, working against Eric Bryan. Boy, the Quakers have been patient tonight. So, you know, John, in the fourth quarter, if it stays like this, they can... Shot and a score for Greenberg. He bursts into the open and fires it home for the hat trick. Hey, Greenberg just came right down that right side, found the seam. Here he comes. Welshmer let up for just a moment. And that was all Greenberg needed to give the Quakers a three-goal lead and five straight goals now for Pennsylvania. Nine to six, and I'll tell you, John, what Pennsylvania can do now is they can make this uh, Delaware keeping them away from the goal work to their advantage and run some time off the clock in the fourth quarter. 45, uh, 40 seconds now to go in the third. And use so the long stick again off that face-off with Tony Phillips. Twice now, Greenberg has scored in the final minute of a period. He did it in the first quarter, and he's done it here in the third quarter. Take a little brisk here, John. Now that the sun has gone down and darkness has set in over the city. Delaware would like to get a goal here before the third quarter ends. And get back to within two, but the pass for Glowacki is too far, and the Quakers will bring it in with 26 seconds to go in the third. And Pennsylvania, as you can well imagine, with this period, has to be really, really have their spirits high. Arcisi set to bring it in. Played good D tonight, gives it up for Bassford. Quakers with a chance for one last offensive thrust here on the third. Hanchett goes down low for Lagator behind the net. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Lagator trying to make something happen. Gives it up for Crofton. Has some trouble on the handle and a whistle with six seconds to go. As Crofton bounces one wide. And a violation against Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So Delaware will bring it in and timekeeper doing the home team thing who wound a couple of extra seconds off the clock there <laughs> fired all the way down in on Bassford and he's able to keep his eye on it and at the end of three quarters Pennsylvania leads Delaware nine to six five straight goals for the Quakes drive your ball into orbit when you tee off with the hot one Warning, the hot one will travel faster and farther than any other golf ball on the planet. Some say the hot one flies too far. I've cut 10 strokes off my game with the hot one, but nobody knows why, because the name on the ball is different. The hot one does not conform to USGA rules. It's smaller and heavier than other balls, and its secret core and advanced dimple design make it fly faster and farther. The Hot One can help you drive the green on a par four and shoot the lowest score of your life. I broke 80 with the Hot One. Call the number on your screen now and receive your trial pack of three Hot Ones for only $9.95. Plus, you'll also get free a $10 Pocket Pro, a proven guide for on-the-course help. If the Hot One doesn't out-hit your current ball, send them back for a guaranteed refund, but keep the $10 Pocket Pro as your free gift. Put the heat on the competition. Order the Hot One now. Welcome back to Franklin Field. Pennsylvania leading Delaware as we head to the fourth quarter, 9-6. to six. The Quakers winning the third quarter by a 5-0 score. Steve Basford pitching a shutout there for 15 minutes. Hey, you'll often see that in lacrosse, and 
To our knowledge, that is the first time that Pennsylvania has shut out a team for a quarter this season, and let's see how long it can go now. Violation off the faceoff, so Delaware will watch Pennsylvania bring it in. Rick Curry with the ball for the Quakers. Races by the double team of Eric Brine and Mike Miner. Curry darting towards the net. Delaware fell asleep there for just a moment, but recovered. Delaware knows now that they can't afford to give up too many more. They're already three in the hole here with 15 minutes to play, knowing they need a minimum of four here and keep Pennsylvania off the scoreboard in order to come out of here with a W, or at the very least, 3-0 and in tie. Goodman in no big hurry with a three-goal lead. Pennsylvania certainly doesn't want to be sitting on this lead right now. There's too much time left to be able to uh, be thinking about doing that. No, but if you can take uh, 30 seconds off here or at a clip, or 45 seconds at a clip, nothing wrong with that. Well, they've been deliberate all night. Well, I think Delaware's forced them into that, though. Spinning free is Curry. As he made his move, he was forced behind the net by Eric Bryan. I thought he could have made a charge for the net there. He could have spun around and maybe going for it. Lagator out high. Gives it up for Crofton. For a minute 15 into the fourth quarter, Pennsylvania ahead by three. Both teams have all their timeouts remaining, two apiece. Tell you, the guys who are at the other end of the field, and they have to keep three players from each side behind the center line. I'll tell you, they've had a restful night back there. <laughs> Could save that time by Blaylock. Curry. Working on Eric Brine. Behind the center line, there are three sets of players. Three Delaware players, three Pennsylvania players, and the keeper. That's the rule. You must be behind that center line. And you know, late when it gets a little cold, it can get awfully cold and windy standing <laughs> out there when uh, a team is not able to get any offense going for a minute, a minute and a half, or two minutes, as Pennsylvania has done during the course of this evening. They have now run two minutes off this clock. They've had one shot on goal in that time. Blaylock had to make a pretty good save. But the Quakers were able to control the rebound. Lipitsky behind the net, working on Mike Miner. Miner's done a good job defensively of keeping the Quakers from getting anything generated towards the middle. That Crofton was, tracks down the loose ball. What you don't want to do now is give any turnovers. You don't want to give Delaware any gifts here if you're Pennsylvania now, but I think pretty soon Delaware's going to have to force something here too. Clock ticking down now to 12 and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The Blue Hens have done a real good job of keeping the Quakers from getting into the middle, but now you're probably right. They have to start to branch out and force things and try to force some turnovers. Definitely. Goodman with the ball behind the net. He had an excellent third quarter, a couple of great assists. And on the night, he's got a goal and those two assists. Curry takes a whack from Barnard. Greenberg now behind the net, guarded by Mike Miner. Pennsylvania's now control the ball for three minutes here now. The equivalent of the four corners. <laughs> <laughs> to a degree. You know, those three guys back there at the center field are hoping for a little action here before you freeze to death in the spot they're at. There they are. You can see them just standing there. <laughs> right on toe in that line. Yep. Goodman, who, in my opinion, was really the, he was the setup man in that, in that third quarter. Just Pennsylvania just taking their time. They've now weaved almost four minutes off this clock. We're down to 11.18 to go here in the fourth quarter. Pennsylvania owns a three-goal lead at 9-6 over the Blue Hens of the University of Delaware. Delaware not letting Pennsylvania get anything going, but Pennsylvania's in no big hurry, and pretty soon the Blue Hens are going to have to be in a hurry. Well, I think they're gonna have to, they're just gonna have to start taking some chances here and see if they can force a turnover, almost did there. Lagator tried to get it in front, but it was knocked away by Brine. It'll be Pennsylvania ball. We're down to 10.54 now. So more than four minutes have ticked off the clock here on Pennsylvania controlling the entire time. And they will remain in possession as Greenberg brings it in against Barnard. And there's a violation against the Quakers. So you don't want to turn the ball over. Boy, I tell you, that's, you're in control of things in a silly turnover. And now here comes Delaware up the field. But now the pressure's on the hands. They know they've got to get something going. But why give them the opportunity? And on the other hand, the Hens have to be patient and realize they can't score three goals at once. 
Ryan tastes the plastic turf. And it looks like the Blue Ants will get a power play out of this. 32nd variety. So that's another mistake by the Quakers and another chance to give the Blue Hens life. Brian went down hard. And it will be Tobin serving the penalty for Pennsylvania. So a 32nd man advantage for the Blue Hens. Minute and a half of the penalty served by Mike in the second half. This is a big 30 seconds now for Delaware. Make no mistake about that. Wonder gives it up for Boyce. Back to Kelly and now Stamos. Ellers goes behind to DeMarzo. This is the man they want to have the ball. Gets it to Wonder, but Wonder's in no position to shoot. Out high to Stamos, a drive and a save by Bassford. Set up very nicely there by DeMarzo. DeMarzo found the open man, Stamos. Phillips eludes the four-checking Ellers and brings it over midfield, and that will do it for the penalty. As the ball goes free behind the net. Stamos and on the far side here. There's DeMarzo whipping it out. Back to DeMarzo. He finds Stamos. Whew. Right in, and goalkeeper Steve Bassford able to keep that ball in front of him. Boy, set up nicely there by DeMarzo. Crofton broke into the clear, but uh, violation before he did so, and it's uh, against Pennsylvania. And now a flag comes down as temper is flared in front, and Crofton says, who, me? But a delay of game penalty going against Pennsylvania, I believe. I believe it will be against Crofton for 30 seconds. Crofton picks it up, and he gets a talking to from assistant Dave Petromella. Quakers with a three-goal lead, 9.50 to go, and they've just given the Blue Hens their fourth power play of the night. So far, the Hens are 0 for 3. Okay, Pennsylvania's made three mistakes here in the last 45 seconds. Fortunately, it hasn't cost them yet. But you just don't want to make the mistakes when you're holding a three-goal lead. Kelly goes behind the net. DeMarzo looking for a cutter in front. Wonder has it, but he's in no position to shoot. Gives it back to DeMarzo. DeMarzo gets it to Wonder. Wonder comes out high. Gives it up for Stamos at the top. Now Kelly from an angle. In front down, low Ellers! Great catch and shoot that time by Kevin Ellers to get Delaware back to within two. All right, it's now 9-7. That ball just came around the perimeter here by Delaware finally came into Ellers, and again, that was set up three passes earlier. He will not get an assist on it, but again, DeMarzo behind the net, getting the flow of the play going. All right, it's now 9-7, now an important face-off here. And that time, the penalty hurt the Quakers. The Blue Hens were able to capitalize. They are now one for four on the man advantage tonight. And with 9-10 to go, Delaware to within two, and that is their first goal in a long, long time, the first goal here in the second half. Ryan Kelly picks up an assist there. He now has three on the evening. And Kelly Delaware right back. In front again. Tried to get it to DeMarzo. DeMarzo couldn't handle, but scoops it up behind the net. Blue Hens feeling some adrenaline rush here. Stamos out high. Tries to get by Curry, but Curry wards him off. Adrenaline rush? I wish I'd said that. <laughs> in front. Score! Stamos with the burst of speed. Gets the Hens to within one. Well, I tell you, John, isn't it amazing you allow a team an opening, and Pennsylvania gave Delaware a couple of opportunities. Here's Stamos coming around, and Stamos makes no mistake, picks up his second goal. Penn controlled the game in this period for almost five minutes. Made a couple of costly turnovers, had a couple of penalties, and boy, Delaware has come back boom, boom to make it 9 to 8. Still that long stick off the face-off. Phillips controls. Vic Sue. Now Pennsylvania has a three-prong decision to make. A, you want to run some time off the clock. B, you want to get something going. And C, you don't want to turn the ball over because there's a lot of time left now at eight minutes and 20 seconds. Crofton, sticked away by Barnard. 
Gives it up to Greenberg out high, flips it to Goodman. Goodman down low, Lipitsky, big save, Blaylock, and he covers the rebound. Great save in there as he read that shot all the way. He had a clear eyes view of that and a big stop there by Jamie Blaylock, the junior out of Whitehall, Maryland, and here come the hens. Barnard gives it up for Miner. Miner working on Tony Phillips. The ball comes free right to Ryan Kelly of Delaware. Kelly's been very important here in the Blue Hen comeback with a big assist. Working on Andy Greenberg. Kelly gets a stick, passes out in front into a mass of players, and Arcisi controls for the Quakers with seven and a half to go. Basford gets it back to Arcisi, and the Quakers mount their offensive attack. But as Basford got it to Arcisi, right in his face was Anthony DiMarzo and almost pulled that ball away from him. Kirk Bryan was slightly shaken up on that last Delaware thrust, and he got some repairs done to him on the bench. Goodman. Had a good night so far. Gets inside, bounces one, and Blaylock had his stick on it to knock it away. He tried to go for the corner, and just as the ball was hitting the turf, Blaylock got the stick on and sent the ball about 30 feet in the air. Croft and working on Barnard. He's got to be sick of Scott Barnard by now. <laughs> Barnard's giving him wax all night long. Crofton had an opening for just a moment, but then the double team came from Stamos. Gets it behind the net to Sue. Vic Sue working on Tad Boyce. Trying to bull his way in front. He does and gets a shot off, but it's wide. Vern breaks closest to it. Quakers will bring it in. Good job by Victor Sue just to get that shot off. Down to 6.34 and a 9-8 game here. We predicted this would be close. Boy, I'll tell you, it got a little closer than Pennsylvania wanted in a real quick hurry. Vern Briggs has it sticked away from him. Picked up by Sue. Just up got the way there. <laughs> Alex Goodman, 6.15 to go. Tries to get inside. Stamos does scores! Alex Goodman with a quick move. Faked his way by Stamos. Gets inside and gives Quake, the Quakers a two-goal cushion once again. I'll tell you, this young man out of Lower Marion High School has played a great game for the Quakers as you saw him just pull his way through. And we mentioned earlier, he is actually, he is just built like a rock. He's 5'11", 190 pounds, and needed every pound of that, John, to bury his way and pull his way through. He now has two goals and two assists, and I'll tell you, he really has been a big man for the Quakers in the second half in particular. Controlled by Eric Bryan. Boy, he really is good on the faceoffs, isn't he? <laughs> Bryan still going right in front. Got a shot off, but it bounced wide. And I believe the whistle blew before the shot from Bryan. And it was a timeout by the Blue Hens, and the Blue Hens cost themselves an opportunity there, but it went awry. Now, Bob Schillinglaw is down by two. His team's come back but uh, they've got to get something going here. They had the momentum. It appears that maybe they've lost it now with that big goal from Goodman. There's Brian. Brian had an awfully good opportunity there. Well, now what you want to do now, you're coming out of a timeout. You've got six minutes exactly remaining here. Well, you've got to make something happen. You've got the ball on the pen end of the field. You're, it's been a seesaw game, but Pennsylvania certainly has been able to control the play through most of the second half. Let's see what Delaware is going to be. Come on, guys. Well, patience might be good, but we have six minutes. You can't afford to uh, be patient forever. You've got to, you've got to put a minimum of two up on the board. But you got to realize that you can't be gunning the ball either from 40 yards out. You've got to work it down low. You still got to work. You've got to be patient in a hurry. I think is what you've got to be. Steve Basford has the game on his shoulders. He's got a two-goal lead to protect. He's made some big saves here in the late going. Delaware continues to pour on the heat. And GW Mix looking for a much needed victory as he heads towards the tail end of the season and trying to right the ship and beat a ranked team. The Blue Hens come in number 18 in the country. And a win this evening, too, would put Pennsylvania with better their wins mark of last year. But still a game to go. Delaware methodically throwing that ball around. 
When it gets into the hands of DeMarzo behind the net, there's a turnover forced by Pennsylvania. Marks knocked it away, and then he got belted by Kevin Eller. It's picked up by Stamos. Stamos had wonder with him, but they were a little bit too tight together to flip the pass. Boyce has it now for the Blue Hands. Goes behind to DeMarzo. Careful DeMarzo else. zips it in front. Ellers had the, sh uh, the opportunity, but uh, he ran right into a double team and never got a shot off. Right, as Ellers came down the center there, he was bopped by two Pennsylvania players and apparently won illegally because we're going to have a penalty here against Pennsylvania. GWMX not happy with that. The third penalty of the fourth quarter for Pennsylvania. Give it to Dave RCC, who got a little bit too aggressive, but then again, I guess you want your defenders to be aggressive in front of the net, protecting that lead. This is a one-minute penalty now, John, and there's 5.17 to go, and the hands trail by two. Ellers gives it to DeMarzo. DeMarzo for Kelly. Back to DeMarzo, and now Ellers again. If it gets into DeMarzo's hands, you know something's going to happen. In front, Wonder got the shot off, and it hit the crossbar. It sure did, but unfortunately it, uh, for Delaware, the shooter, John Wonder, plunked one off the crossbar. He's had some tough luck in this second half. Tad Boyce up the middle. Gives it to Stamos, has some trouble on the handle, and Stephen Marks jumps on him and takes it away for the Quakers. Heads up play for Stephen Marks. About a half minute left on the penalty. Willis Gay tried to get a download at Crofton, who was left all alone. Blaylock bringing it back. He's in a hurry because Delaware is on the power plan. They don't want to waste this opportunity or any time at all off the clock. And now it's too late because the power play has come to an end. So Pennsylvania's done a great job killing them here. Sure Schellers have. spins towards the middle. Gets a stick in the face. DeMarzo ducks inside, whips a shot just wide. The ball kind of rose on DeMarzo and sailed over the net. 41. In front, Stamos! Great shot by Stamos and great play to fight his way inside as he beat the Quaker defender in there, Stephen Marks. And the hands are within a goal. Marks hit the ground and so did Stamos, but Stamos put it in the net first. The hat trick tonight for Tom Stamos. And he had a hat trick against the Quakers last year. So he likes playing against Pennsylvania. And he'd like to come away with a W. His team to within a goal now at 10 to 9, 4.04 to go. And a big face off here between Eric Bryan and Tony Phillips. Controlled by Pennsylvania's Rick Curry, but he goes down. And the whistle blows before the Blue Hens can escape the scene of the crime. Pennsylvania, who owned the third quarter, shutting out Delaware 4 0, have been outscored 3 1 here in the fourth quarter. That, despite the fact that the Quakers literally owned the first five minutes of this quarter by just throwing the ball around behind the Delaware net. Can't do it now, though, or if they do it, they better be very cautious. You do not want to turn the ball over. Lots of time left, three minutes and 40 seconds. Goodman working on Eric Bryan. Gets inside of Brian, looking for an open man in front. Whips a pass to Lagator, but it never got to him. Picked up by Curry, gets it to Vern Briggs. Briggs gets belted twice, and coming away with the ball is Mike Miner for Delaware. Miner's played a very solid defensive game. Gives it to DeMarzo. DeMarzo looking for somebody in front. Gives it to Kelly out high. Kelly will back it off and set things up with 3-10 to go in regulation. Want to see somebody on DeMarzo right away. You do not want to let him get set up. It looks like Mike Tobin's going to be the man for Pennsylvania. Ellers working inside of Briggs. Had the ball stripped, gets it back. Now he's tripped up by RCC and a flag goes down. And RCC will head to the penalty box. And again, the Blue Hens are headed for a man advantage. All right, that's going to be a one-minute penalty, too. So... RCC picks up his second one-minute penalty here in a very short period of time, probably in the last five minutes. So now Delaware, a golden opportunity. 2.56 left in the fourth. They are down by a goal, but have a man advantage for 60 seconds. Three and a half minutes in penalties on the season now for RCC. Boyce gives it up to Wonder, who's been fairly silent tonight. They've kept a good eye on him. 
Now Kelly bounces one in. Good save, Bassford. It's loose in front. Tobin comes away for Pennsylvania. He loses it, but right to Willis Gay. Gay controlling and just guns it the length of the field. Smart play by the youngster. Just get it out of harm's way. Well, he did a nice job throwing that ball down the field. Got all oof behind that. Great save there by Bassford at the other end. He was able to read that play very well. He was able to see it. That's a key. In tight, Stamos. He's got the hat trick, and he guns one just wide here. So he had a good angle on that goal. There's about 19 seconds left on the penalty to RCC. In front, Wonder gunned it right over the top of the net. Hey, Wonder's had some poor luck this evening, and it continued there. He was in traffic. DeMarzo did a good job to get him the ball, and he could not tuck it home. Timeout called by the Quakers with 2.09 to go, and GW Mix's team desperately trying to hang on to the victory. That they are, plus the fact, too, uh, they still have about another eight or nine seconds to kill off on this penalty. There you see the Delaware Blue Hens gathering. And right now they know the job at hand. They've got to score a goal. There's no two ways about that. And will have possession when play resumes, so the Quakers want to play keep away, something they showed at the beginning of this quarter that they can. Then again, the Blue Hens will be much more aggressive. Well, they have to be now. They have to take some chances there. You see the red and blue gathered around GW Mix. GW Mix pretty pleased with the way things have gone this year, except for that Drexel defeat. Yeah. He feels like things are back on the right track. This year they've been in a lot more games than they were last year when they got blown out so often. So he felt like they were on the right road, and then Drexel happened, and it's kind of put a sour taste in his mouth for this season. This is a big victory if he can hold on for the last 209. And, you know, he's preaching to his kids to keep their heads and uh, just play within themselves. All the coaching cliches, but just get the job done. No turnovers, play smart, and certainly no more penalties. Well, I'll tell you, John, you've done it all. You ought to be down there coaching, too. <laughs> I got all the cliches. <laughs> I had them yelled at me so many times. <laughs> Hi, the timeouts remaining. Each team has one remaining. And there's still a few seconds remaining on the penalty to RCC. Pennsylvania will have the ball deep in their own territory. And it looks like Bassford's going to play it, the goalkeeper. So Bassford from behind the net with 2.09 to go, and the Quakers up a goal. If he wings it down the field, I would think he probably would. Okay, here we go. Wings it in front and it gets away, but right there to pick it up, Duncan McBean, and a good thing he was there because Bassford was way out of his net. The turnover by the Quakers, nonetheless, Delaware will bring this ball in. That's uh, the, just the end of the penalty. The one minute has just expired. Now Pennsylvania back to full strength. Boyce will bring the ball in for the Blue Hens. 1.56 to go. Delaware will probably try to swing it to the far side. And you know they're going through Tony DeMarzo. That's, and you know where Mike Tobin, number 43 for Pennsylvania, is going to be too, right with DeMarzo. And He's checking him out now behind the net as he swings around to the far side. Stamos with the ball here. Gets away from Marks for just a split second. Wonder in front. He knots the game. John Wonder, who's been silent for the most part, got a great feed from Tom Stamos. And we are tied at 10. I'll tell you, Wonder has had some bad luck through the evening. But boy, he made up with it right there as you see him at the corner of the net. Just raising his hands in quiet triumph there, and Delaware has tied this game at 10. What a crazy, crazy game. 142 to go, still plenty of time for somebody to get something on the board. Phillips versus Brine on the faceoff, and Brine controls, and the Blue Hens streak down the field. Violation and a whistle, and... It'll be against DeMarzo, and he's not sure what it is, but Pennsylvania will have the ball now with a minute 36 to go. DeMarzo gave a good whack to Curry. 
who comes away with the ball. Curry looking for an opening. He goes down hard, and a flag goes down as Tom Rusi tripped up Rick Curry. Michael Cochran makes the call. Rusi's not happy. It's going to be a 30-second penalty. And it'll be Rusi who is boxed. Just in case you're wondering, the event of a tie score at the end of regulation play, there will be a two-minute intermission. Sudden death overtime will then begin. Teams play periods of four minutes in the sudden death overtimes. They keep playing till somebody scores. Hope you brought a lunch. If you Minute, did, can I have some? <laughs> Minute 26 to go. Pennsylvania on the power play. They have not had much success on that tonight or this season. It's going to be a short one with just 30 seconds to go. So Pennsylvania on the penalty. So Pennsylvania is going to have to move it and move it quick. They go behind the net. Crofton. They swing it to Goodman, who's had a good night, looking for somebody down low. Crofton there has some trouble on the handle, and Blaylock comes away with it. Good aggressive play by the goalie for Delaware. Just five seconds on the advantage, and Delaware has killed it all. Now the whistle blows as Barnard had possession and committed a violation. So another turnover for Delaware. 53 seconds to go, and the Quakers will try and get something going. Briggs gives it up for Goodman. Goodman out high. He's done a great job out there tonight. Tries to get by the defender. Gets a shot off. Goes behind. And Greenberg was the closest man to it with 49 seconds to go. Well, we told you in the beginning it could get any closer. We did not lie to you. We, <laughs> we told you like it was. Greenberg working on Dolsky. Trying to get inside of Dolsky. He can't. Gives it to Goodman. Goodman looking for a cutter. McLean is in front for him, but he can't get open. 25 seconds to go. Goodman going to try and do it himself. Gets inside one defender. Gives it up to Greenberg. Comes out to Crofton. He has some trouble on the handle. The ball comes free. And here comes Delaware, if they can find the handle. And now Rusi does. 10 seconds to go. Miner with five seconds. He's going to have to do it himself. Just fire it towards the net. He does, but it's high. And we are headed to overtime. Delaware, a big comeback. And after four quarters, we're still not done. We're tied at 10. I never noticed it growing up, but my parents were kind of old. But they were cool, because whenever us kids got bored, they'd do anything to entertain us. Gee, if we only had Prism, Pop wouldn't have to walk with that limp. Love great entertainment? Then look to Prism for over 100 different movies a month. Hits like Lethal Weapon 3 and Batman Returns. To order Prism, dial 1-800-CABLE-ME. Call now and get $4.95 installation or a free upgrade plus two free Phillies tickets. You wouldn't believe the stuff Mom would do when we were really bored. Back to Franklin Field, John Miller with John McAdams. Pennsylvania and Delaware tied at 10. And GW Mix can't be happy that his team was outscored 4-1 to one in the fourth quarter. A big comeback for the Blue Hens as uh, they put on all kinds of heat. And uh, you saw all the speed and the explosiveness that the Blue Hens have to offer. Been a weird second half, John. <laughs> Third quarter, Delaware's kept off the board at 4 nothing. then in the second and the fourth quarter and literally Delaware scored all four of their goals in the last 10 minutes because Pennsylvania held on to the ball for the first five minutes of the fourth quarter. All right, we go four minutes, sudden death, first team to score gets the W. If they don't score at the end of the four minutes, well, we'll do it again. Tony Phillips against Eric Ryan in a very important faceoff to start overtime. Stick still out there for Pennsylvania as they've used those long sticks on the draw since the second quarter. Ryan controls. Delaware moving right to left here in OT. Mike Miner controls, goes behind the net to the always dangerous DeMarzo. DeMarzo gives it to Stamos. He's had a good night. Stamos cuts his way in front, gets the shot off. Big save, Vasford. 
He was able to read that very well and made the save, and now Pennsylvania will get their offensive opportunity. Nice lead pass from Bassford. As Penn breaks out quickly, Phil Perry in the middle of the field. Looking for some help, has Curry behind him, didn't realize it, now finds Curry at the top. Goodman with the ball for Pennsylvania. Gives it to Greenberg. Greenberg had a seam, but had his momentum going away from the net, so he backs it off, and the Quakers will set things up. Goodman in possession of the ball. Only question here is who's going to be the hero of this game? Goodman wants it to be him, trying to spin his way in front. Time down to 245 in this first overtime. Goodman gives it up. A try! Greenberg scores! Penn wins! Andy Greenberg with his fourth of the night gives Pennsylvania a much-needed victory. And this comes at 120 of the overtime. As you see, Greenberg now will take the pass and fires it past keeper Jamie Blaylock. And a happy band of Pennsylvania Quakers you see right there as Pennsylvania did it the hard way and won 11-10. What a game. We'll come back and wrap it up in a moment.